Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is my three things from Arsenal nil, Everton nil at the Emirates this afternoon. Great point for the Toffees. Arsenal will be really frustrated. They had all of the game, all of the possession, all of the chances, and it's ended nil nil. And for them, with Liverpool dropping two points at home to Fulham, that'll be another massive opportunity that Arsenal have missed. But that's up to them. We're looking at it from an Everton perspective and ours is most definitely a point gained today from a game that you look at and you go, you know, this is one where you probably get no points from. Uh, Everton have got a point from it, so that's always good, always a bonus point there. Um, and yeah, you know, four points from the last six are available following that awful performance at Manchester United. will have given everyone a big boost around the club and that's good. It's good, and we go on now. We've got another for the you know the rest of December three tough games, haven't we? We've got Chelsea at home, Manchester City away, and Nottingham Forest at home, and um, we're gonna have to defend well in all all of those games really for the year before we you know we move into the new year. But it's about today, and that was a good point and a really good defensive performance. Okay, we've we've been a little bit fortunate at times, but you have to have that, and we've you know Arsenal. Haven't played at their level, but that's nothing to do with us. We can only do what we can do on the day, and we've ended up grinding out a really good result. Bit of bit gutting the Ipswich one at Wolves, I think it was one one for you know going into that ninety fourth minute, um, and that would have been a great result, wouldn't it as well? But it's about us, it's about Evan, and and I'm not too concerned about Ipswich if if truth be told, and Wolves will change their manager now whether they get. Any sort of boost from that, it's only time will tell. Um, but yeah, we got a good point and a very, very uh, valuable point as well. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is Jordan Pickford. I thought he was excellent today, given man of the match. And I think it's weird. I did a podcast yesterday with um, Highbury Squad. Very good. And... Um, seeing some of the comments, like the, the perception of Pickford... I just find a bit mad that he still doesn't get the respect. I, I honestly don't understand it. I really don't understand it. I think he's a very, very good goalkeeper. He's England's best goalie comfortably as well. Like, really comfortably. There's no one in it anywhere near his level yet. Whether that's... Well, it'll have to change, won't it? Um, but people still talk about him with a lack of respect. And I, I just find it mad. I find it mad and I think, no, I'm not talking about, I was on with Sophie and Lee Judges and they, they didn't disrespect Pickford at all. In fact, Lee said he always has a good game against Arsenal. Um, but it was some of the comments and, it, and I see it on social media and I see it if we ever put a post on our community thing, if there's something that he's done, if he's played for England or, you know, he's won his 70 or whatever, whatever it is. And you see clearly other fans come on and have a go and, and he's crap and he's this and he's that and, it, 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 I, I don't mind the ones who are, you know, up like Liverpool, like Liverpool fans who are massively bitter, you know, for whatever reason. I get that. And I get Newcastle fans who don't like him because obviously he gives it to Newcastle fans. But you see fans of other clubs and other conversations and you're just like, what? Like, what are you watching? What are you seeing? Because there's this, me personally, there's a misconception that he's rubbish for Everton as well. But he does well for England. He's all right for England, but he's rubbish for Everton. So it's and it's don't think that's the case. There's been games for us where he's not played well. Of course there has. But in general, he's very good. And you know, is the better goalkeepers around? Of course, in the Premier League, there's a few better goalkeepers than Jordan Pickford, but there's no better England goalkeeper than Jordan Pickford anyway. And ironically, I look at the likes of Chelsea and think if you had a Pickford in goal, you might be even closer. Because I'm still not convinced with theirs. Theirs are a bit of hit and miss at the moment. I think Chelsea's keepers. I think Pickford, he's not as big as some of their goalies, but I just think he's he's more stable. He's better with the ball and things like that. I just find it weird. I find it weird, the kicking that people give him. It's odd. It is odd. But there you go. He was excellent for me today. He's come up big. A couple of times when he's needed to, is okay. He done a little bit of a unorthodox punch in the first half, shall we say? But he got it away from Kai Havertz, and that's 
all that matters. He took other things, come and claimed it nicely, organised. Give Tarkovsky a hospital pass, but it was okay. We got away with it. So yeah, it's thought that it, it. I just find it weird because the commentary team was sort of alluding to a couple of things as well about him and it's the perception of him. I, think, I just find it really strange. Anyway, I've rambled on far too long about that one. Second thing I want to talk about is Everton's passing when we break. It's absolutely atrocious, and it's something that needs working on because we got ourselves in a few times to to decent areas with the ball and the final pass is either under hit or if it's the Corey it's over hit or not near the player and I know people will talk about quality and go well that's the quality of the player and but the players have shown that there is a decent quality there from them they've proven that and again it plays into this thing oh we're not we're not good enough we're always you know we, we're a squad that's down near the bottom it, it's utter nonsense uh, and today again proves that. But there has to be better patterns of play, but the players have to take more care with the ball. Even near the end, we've had a, a good break. We're on 3v2. Three, three and the pass is wrong again. It's behind the player. And Breuer has to check before he goes and gets it instead of it being ahead of him to run onto. And we saw it a couple of times. And we saw it in, even at Old Trafford in the opening, sort of 25 minutes of that game. So that's one area I think Everton can really improve on. If you could get get that right, make sure the weight of the pass is right, or have different options when you break. The way we do, we could catch, we could have caught Arsenal out maybe today, and that would have been that would have been the ultimate kick in the balls for them, wouldn't it? If we'd have gone and nicked it near the end, and so that's certainly an area that the manager, the coaches, and the players have got to work on. Is that when we break the transition, when we break, making sure the ball is ahead of the play, making sure it's a good weight on it, uh, and and it'll, I think we get even better results. So, just it just annoyed me a few times the weight of the pass or the or it under hits the core. Just sometimes makes passing look hard, and he also should have hit the target properly with his uh, the one early on as well. Mangala played it into him and. He, you know, he should have gone across the keeper with his right foot, but hey ho, it is what it is. And a final thing is the takeover. It'd be silly not to mention it. It's expecting to be concluded this coming week. And I think it represents a opportunity for the football club to reset, to move forward, to move away from these uncertain waters that we've been swimming in for a couple of years. Choppy waters, shall we say, with points deductions. But coming out the other side of it, there's a, a brand new, unbelievable stadium on the banks of the Royal Blue Mersey, ready to go. And I think it's an opportunity for them to, to set the whole club, which they will do. You know, the belief is that they've identified people for chairman's role, maybe the CEO, board members. Obviously, the assessing the manager's position, and they will. Winning that little games will be will bring scrutiny and rightly so. That's what everyone needs to there's a standard. They'll assess their coaching staff, players will be getting assessed. But it's an opportunity for our football club finally to start taking the right steps moving forward. I think Farad Mashiri come in in a blaze of glory, didn't he? We'd had Bill Kenwright for a long time. He needed a billionaire, Bill Kenwright said it himself. We got Farad Mashiri. He wanted to splash the cash and play football manager and and be you know bit Brewster's millions with it all, but he did it. Not that he didn't commit to it because he did. He, he put the money up, or him and his mate did, but he never committed to it fully. There was no real sound plan. There was no roadmap to get where he wanted to go. It was just oh well, well, let's get a director of football in. So they got one in. He was a scout, never done the role before. They got Koeman and they went for a Hollywood manager and it just went on and on and on. They listened to people who wanted to make money off players, agents, and they didn't put their own people into run Everton Football Club. They left it stagnant. They left people who'd been in there who wanted to feather their own nest and that was the worst thing to do. And it played out like that, didn't it? It played out like that where they left the club, those people. So I'm hoping the freaking group and, and a I believe that they will are putting their own people in, which I think is a huge step forward for us. It's a, a real opportunity to move a football club forward. We had Bill Kenwright, whether you liked him or you didn't like him, was in 
at Everton for a long time. For a long time. So therefore his way of doing things, his his sort of um handprint, if you like, fingerprints were all over Everton for that period of time. Even when Mashiri come in, Bill was still influential to a certain extent. And everyone that Bill had had sort of <coughs> excuse me, like the Nice Barrett backs and then other people under that regime. Had all been used to Bill Kennight's way of doing it, and then that just carried on even when Farah Mashiri was there. So I think the biggest, it's our biggest opportunity to have a different way of thinking for 20 years, really, isn't it? More, 25 years. And people should be a bit excited. I'm not saying it's, you know, this is it now, we're going to be back, we're going to do this, we're going to, but what I mean is it's a new vision for the football club, it's a fresh slate, and everybody has to has to buy into that and get on board with that. There'll be changes. There'll be changes within the football club. There'll be changes at coaching, manager level. There'll be changes playing staff level. There's already going to be board changes. So the football club is is going to be moving in a very different direction. We need it as fans. We need to be able to cling on to something we believe in and move forward and not have to have the stress of worrying about the football club, worrying what comes next. Can we buy players? Who do we have to sell? You know, with the ground, we're going into a new stadium. There's just the opportunity there to refresh not only the squad, the new stadium and everything. So I think you should, if you're a blue nose, you should be cautiously optimistic that things are going to get better. We have to see how it plays out. It's Everton and we all know it. But we should be cautiously optimistic and looking forward to what comes next because it has been a it's been a bad four years hasn't it since COVID started you know COVID come in and took away us having the ability to go to the match while Carlo Ancelotti was on the line and we had that we had obviously the PSR stuff we had the, the Ukraine Russia conflict which turned the tap off to money and with that we've had points deductions and, and we've had to sell good players so we've we have been through it quite a bit for four years. And you can include all the stuff before it as well, which is obviously rubbish when you're not competing for stuff. But the last four years in particular have been really difficult, beginning with a global pandemic. So hopefully now, from an Everton perspective, things can start to move forward. We can start to to look upwards. A lot of work to do still right now. But hopefully it's a much, much brighter future for us and we can get back to... Loving our football club, you know, getting behind, we, we always get behind the team, um, buying exciting players, playing in a new stadium, a new era, a new start, and, and just enjoy going to match again and enjoy Everton being competitive. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. Right, there you go. There are my three things. Check out all of the other match reaction stuff from Arsenal nil, Everton nil today. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later.